The champs outscored the Pacers 61-45 in the second half of Game 3, continuing a trend in these playoffs. The Heat is averaging nearly 53 points in the second half. Uh, this is actually the series against the Pacers, as opposed to just 41 points in the first half. Rick Kamla, Steve Smith, Brent Berry, and Mo Williams, and Mo, former teammate of LeBron James, is it a good idea to talk trash to the King? Well, LeBron is not really a trash-talking um, type player. He just got a, kind of goes about his business and just handle it. Um, so it, it, was, it was pretty, um, you know, I, I didn't expect that. So to get something back out of him was, was impressive. So uh, we, we'll see where that goes. You know, it can be either good or bad. But um, I'm not used to him talking, talking back. You know, I'm used to him just going out there handling his business and just keep agree, it moving. Do you agree with Lance Stevenson that it's a sign of weakness with, Lebr with LeBron? No, I wouldn't say a sign of weakness because I do a lot of trash talking. So I, I do, if you notice the Houston um, series, I was messing with the rookie Troy Daniels. And, um, I mean, he came out lighting us up, making all kind of shots. And my thing was let me get him some attention. Let me get the reporters in, in, in his locker room asking them questions about me that has nothing to do with the game. Now all his homeboys got to call him, all his friends, his mom, his sister, everybody. What's going on? Is, is something wrong with you guys? It's nothing wrong with us, you know. And the thing is, it's all a tactic. And that's what Lance Stevenson is trying to do. And Bron knows he do. Bron is an intelligent basketball player. If he, if he says something back to him, he says something for a reason. And, and I think that's more so to just to see if he's ready for that because he wasn't expecting Bron to say anything back to him. Well, I'm not sure if after game three, LeBron James said scoreboard, but uh, it's certainly right in favor of the Heat and Bones. Ray Allen added another thrilling chapter to his NBA novel in game three. How does he make it look so easy? Well, if go to the game three hours before it starts and you'll see Ray Allen shooting. I mean, that's, that's how he gets it done. Practice, practice, practice. But he was awesome again in the fourth quarter. Really, uh, that's where the Miami Heat are, are making their bones in this year's playoffs. Their fourth quarters have been phenomenal. And in this game, lots of talk, obviously, afterwards about David West having to match up with Ray Allen, who's a tireless offensive worker by running around a bunch of picks. There were some great sets that Miami was very patient to develop uh, Ray Allen getting open on those sets against David West and then he caught a couple in transition which really opened up the game but Ray was phenomenal and that's what they come to expect from Ray Allen is big shots in the fourth quarter uh, he's been doing it for his entire career and turnovers were a big story in game three Smitty 19 turnovers by the Pacers turned into 26 heat points you know the Pacers know that's a recipe for disaster. It is, and also timing. You know, only three fourth quarter turnovers, but they led to nine points. And the reason why it's hard in the fourth quarter to turn the basketball against the Miami Heat, because this is when they're playing small basketball. You have Ray Allen out there, Dwayne Wade, uh, LeBron James, and, you know, Norris Cole. And if you're going to turn the basketball over, you're going to get shots like this from Ray Allen, knocking down threes, and it's hard for the Pacers. And I know Frank Vogel is staying to his principles. He's going to stay big. But when you turn that basketball over in the fourth quarter with that small lineup, you're going to have a lot of open shots for Ray Allen and also a lot of driving lanes for LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Game four from Miami, Monday night, 8.30 ESPN. Then Wednesday night, back at the Fieldhouse in Indy, also 8.30 ESPN.